Hello, welcome to News from the Fringe. I'm Christopher. Just Chris, actually. But Christopher, if you want to call me that. Whatever. I don't know why I mentioned it. Alright, so today, I just want to show you this video. You guys know how much I love birds, and I've got my little friends, my little butcher bird friends. Check out this video. It's pretty mad, eh? I'd say it's pretty obvious what it is. It looks like it's a, a mem what's it called a murmuration of birds. Starlings do it. Here's an example of starlings in a murmuration. And I'm going to assume that if some sort of predators come in, a hawk or something, and they've just all dived for cover straight into the earth. Apparently, you can see there that um, there's quite a few that just died on impact. So that's pretty full on. <laughs> that is an interesting video, and there you have it. So today... I think it's going to be a fairly quick video. I've only got, I've got a few stories, but they're only short ones. The first one is, Bushwalkers raise concerns after an unusual encounter with a mysterious boy in Blue Mountains. That's not the title. I'm going to change the title. I forgot to rewrite. Usually I rewrite the titles to make them smaller. But let's just keep going anyway. Bushwalkers have raised concerns for a young child spotted alone in a peculiar encounter on a Blue Mountains walking track today. The boy approached two people and asked if they had seen his mum before he ran off towards Evans' lookout. The bushwalkers found the boy on a track at Blackheath between Govett's Leap and Evans' lookout at about 3.45pm. Bushwalkers have raised concerns for... Bushwalkers have raised concerns for a young child spotted alone in a peculiar encounter. Oh, hang on. That's a repeat. And another repeat. Must have been a photo or something. The sighting was reported to the police and a coordinated search of the area was launched. The child is described as being of Caucasian appearance with blonde hair and believed to be aged around 10. Police said no reports of a missing boy or woman have been made. And I found this article probably about a week ago, and, oh man, actually, it's, by the time I get this video up, it's probably going to be like two or three weeks. But on the recording, or <laughs> what am I trying to say? Up until now, there's been no further information on this kid, so... If it was a hoax, maybe, who knows, but it's interesting. It's, could it be a ghost boy? Maybe some people have been saying maybe there's a off grid community somewhere in the blue mountains. There. It's all speculation. Okay. Let's go on. Anyway, the imminent invasion, Dr. David Jacobs of Temple university has reached a rather startling conclusion about abductees experiences. Despite the unusual nature of such claims, there are still a surprising number of people who believe that they have, at some stage in their lives, encountered beings from another world. The typical abduction experience usually involves a person being taken from their home, subjected to medical exper experiments, and then returned with their memories of the encounter distorted or erased. But you guys already know that. One man who has been attempting to make sense of such experiences is Dr. David Jacobs a researcher and author who has spent years collecting and comparing abductee testimonies. He has since come to the rather startling conclusion that abduction is a precursor to, precursor to a future alien invasion with the abductees themselves fulfilling some sort of role during the attack. It's actually pretty old, this idea. He's had a, at least one book out for, I don't know how long, 10 years or more, stating the same thing, that there's an invasion in, in progress. Quote, we have spread around the world and conquered as much as we can. We don't know whether this is true of other beings or not, 
but it certainly is true of what humans have done, he said. My best guess, and this is a guess, is that, yeah, they're doing the same thing, Jacob said. Ah, he continues. This is what they do, just like us. Maybe, maybe not. Dr. Jacobs also suggests that reports by abductees of human-like aliens aboard UFOs could indicate that plans to infiltrate human society are already in motion. Quote, What they were describing was that the ones on board who looked really, really human were coming down and trying to learn what it's like to walk among us, to be human. <coughs> At that point I knew it's integration into society prior to takeover. They can control us, and we can't control them. They are superhumans, so to speak. Whether they are going to take over or not, they can control the human mind. I don't know what's going to happen after that, and I fear the worst. Mm. I think he makes a few good points, but it just comes across as, uh, I don't know, maybe slightly paranoid or something. I know he's... He says he claims he's got a lot of good evidence to back this up, but there's also the other side of the of the debate where they're all saying that these aliens are peaceful and trying to help humanity. So I don't know. I just realised I didn't iron my sleeves. I only ironed the front. Didn't iron the back either because you're not going to see that. Anyway, continuing, the Holy Grail. Some researchers believe that the long-sought relic is actually situated in Spain's Valencia Cathedral. Few artifacts have inspired more debate and intrigue throughout history than the fabled Holy Grail, the, the cup said to have once held the blood of Christ. So to cut this, <laughs> to cut this article short, I'm just going to say this. In recent years, however, some historians have grown to believe that an ancient cup, which currently sits on display in Spain's Valencia Cathedral, might be the very thing they've been searching for, and here it is. Legend indicates that the Holy Grail is comprised of two parts, a cup made of reddish-brown agate stone and a carved gold reliquary on which the cup sits. Previous analysis has suggested that the cup in Valencia dates back to the time of Jesus and originated in Egypt or Palestine, the only places where this particular agate can be found. Curator Jose Vedagua, who is as knowledgeable as anyone can be on the subject, suggests that the grail may have been taken when St. Mark fled Jerusalem during the Roman invasion of 70 CE. After settling in Rome, he argues that the Grail was passed down between various popes before ending up in Valencia sometime in the 15th century. Just remembered I've got a little guitar. It's a Valencia guitar. I'll show you. Unidentified lights stalked a US Navy vessel. According to documentary filmmaker Dave C. Beatty, the incident involved the U.S. Navy warship USS Kearsafe, which had been on a training exercise off the east coast of the United States in October 2021, when it encountered two balls of light. The objects, whatever they were, repeatedly pursued the vessel over the course of several days, while remaining at a distance of around half a mile behind and at an altitude of 200 feet. They had initially been spotted by the ship's watch at night, who discovered that, for some unknown reason, they were unable to lock on to the objects with thermal targeting. Some of the marines believed that the objects were part of an anti-drone weapon training exercise, but were left perplexed when available countermeasures did not have any effect on them whatsoever. When the incident was reported, the officer in charge was told that the objects were not ours. And... I just noticed something while reading through there that, where is it? Um, yeah, so these lights were spotted at night and, you know, that's not that impressive, let's be honest. But the fact that it followed them for several days, so those lights were there during the day as well. That makes it a lot more interesting. I thought this was going to be a boring one. 
I guess it's kind of boring because it's just lights. But it's also interesting because it's, um, this is the US government releasing information about phenomena that they, they can't explain and they're letting the public, uh, digest it. So this is, this is cool. I like it. Good on you, US. Amazing dinosaur fossil. Paleontologists believe that they may have found one of the victims of the extinction event that ended the dinosaurs. The fossilized leg, which was found at an excavation site in North Dakota, is so well preserved that it still has its skin attached to it. Dating back to the very end of the Cretaceous, it has been speculated that this particular animal might have been killed by the very asteroid strike that ended the reign of the dinosaurs. It belonged to a species of herbivorous dinosaur known as the Thessalosaurus. Quote, It's from a group that we didn't have any previous record of what its skin looked like, and it shows very conclusively that these animals were very scaly, like lizards, said researcher Paul Barrett from London's Natural, hum Natural History Museum. And he continues, They weren't feathered like their meat-eating contemporaries. There still remain some questions over the exact circumstances under which this particular specimen died. Some experts have played down the suggestion that it died at the time of the extinction and instead maintain that it could have died days, months or even years earlier. As things stand, research is still ongoing. But whatever the story behind the fossil, it still remains one of the best preserved specimens paleontologists have ever seen. And I was fascinated when I saw this photo because it's in 3D. Most fossils are flat, but you can see some musculature. You can see the skin, like you said. You can see the shape of the foot. And yeah, it just, it amazes me. And there's a few other very well-preserved dinosaurs that I've, I'll put up on the screen here just to have a quick flick through. Fascinating. Just fascinating. And so continuing on with the theme of the extinction event. Here we have possible evidence of the extinction asteroid caught in amber. Righto. Paleontologists have discovered fragments of the asteroid that brought about the demise of the dinosaurs. Finding insects and other small prehistoric creatures trapped in amber is one thing, but now scientists believe that they have gone one better by discovering tiny slivers of the very space rock that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs some 66 million years ago. The object, which struck the planet in what is now Mexico, has long remained a topic of study and debate, with scientists attempting to determine what type of object it was and what it was made of. Quote, If you're able to actually identify it, and we're on the road to doing that, then you can actually say, Amazing! We know what it was. <laughs> said paleontologist Robert De Palma. Yep, that makes sense to me. If you can identify it, then you can say you know what it is. <laughs> the shards which were found at an ex excavation site in North D Dakota were believed to have been preserved in tree sap at the time of the impact and then fossilized over millions of years. If it is conclusively confirmed that they are indeed from the space rock which wiped out the dinosaurs, it will offer up some of the strongest evidence yet of the nature of this devastating impactor. And so, me being the simpleton that I am, this just seems, uh, it seems far-fetched. Like, how? I know I don't understand it. So, clearly, these scientists, uh, you know, they're not just making, they're, just, they're not bullshitting us. They're, but I just find it so hard to understand how fragments of a meteor could get trapped in amber like maybe i don't know i don't get it how <laughs> anyway that's for the scientists i think that's all i've got actually yeah that is all i've got so sorry it's it was a bit of a rushed one i'm i wanted to get this one out really quickly and i didn't really sit down and read through them first and I had to iron my shirt. I quickly ironed my shirt, like I said, and I missed the, uh, the sleeves, and I feel all embarrassed about it. Be nice in the comments. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got today. So, 
So <laughs> it was uh, a bit messy, but I'm sure you, hopefully you will forgive me. And with that being said, I bid you farewell. Hope you have a great day. I enjoyed making the video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And I'll see you next time.